So thank you all for joining us. This is our first time conference attendee virtual welcome event. Um, the point of this obviously was to bring folks together who may be coming for the first time, but also, you know, this may be a newer experience. Maybe you've come a couple times before and want a refresher on what SMS conferences are about. Um, so yeah, we've basically brought together two of our wonderful conference uh, co-chairs um, to share a little about their experiences. Um, planning the conference and what they're looking forward to. Um, and then we're going to go into a couple of breakout rooms. Um, but first, just want to introduce um, ourselves, those of us who are working with the SMS office, planning the conference, so you all know who we are. Um, I'm Amber Robin. I'm the Senior Program Manager for Membership and Foundation. Um, so I manage uh, membership, our interest groups and communities, uh, member circle, our online community, um, and also our research foundation. And then Anna, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. My name is Anna Allen. Um, I'm also with the SMS office. Um, I'm the senior program manager for conferences and events. Um, I have uh, the annual conference is, is one of my uh, main duties at SMS. Um, I work with the hotel. I work with all of our vendors. Um, I have the absolute pleasure of working with um, our volunteers. Uh, for example, the IGNC leaders who uh, put together the IGNC sessions, um, the competitive program, the workshops, and of course, um, our conference program chairs um, this year who are um, Richard Anu and um, Jamie. Jamie, who couldn't uh, be with us today, but um, we do have um, Anu Ottawa and Richard Whittington here. Um, and I'm actually going to turn it over to them to introduce themselves to you. Anna, you go first. All right. So hi, everyone, um, and welcome to the session. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. My name is Anu Vatwa. I am an associate professor at Imperial College London, and I a lot, some of my work relates to corporate entrepreneurship, to innovation, open innovation, etc. I've been at Imperial for seven years. I've been coming to SMS. I looked it up uh, since 2003. So I feel like an old timer here. Richard, over to you. Hi, I'm Richard, and first of all, apologies. I can't get my video to work for some reason. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I am truly an old timer. My first <laughs> SMS conference was in London in 1990, I believe. So um, I teach strategy at the Saeed Business School. I've been there, too, for about 25 years. Uh, my main interest is in strategy as practice. And I've always regarded the SMS as a very important community for my research and um, just developing conversations about strategy. And I hope you'll enjoy that. It has a very particular feel and um, the team here will explain why it's such a special conference over the next few minutes. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Do we want to dive into our questions for, uh, for Richard and Anu? Let's go for it. Um, so Anna, did you want to ask the first one? Yeah, sure. So you've already told us a little bit about yourselves, and I was wondering if you could also share um, some information about how you came to SMS, what your, what maybe your first SMS conference was like. Tell us about your kind of introduction and history with SMS. Who wants to go first? Richard, do you want to go first? Well, I got the longer history, so why don't we curtail okay. that by you going first again, Anu? I can think about and what that, I would say. All right, that's okay. So I, as I said, I first attended SMS as a PhD student in 2003. It was in Baltimore. I was feeling on top of the world because I'd had two uh, proposals accepted. And, you know, as you know, at SMS, I think it's still the case that you can only have two and no more. So I was feeling like, wow, I hit the jackpot. Um, and so I come to my first SMS and I have truly felt at home. That's where I found my tribe over the next few years, even more so than at the academy. So for those of you who are going to the academy and have never been to SMS, uh, the academy is like you feel lost, especially if you are a PhD student. Uh, this place was special in the sense that it inducted me into the academy, to the academy conferences, um, because this was the first place where I found people that I am now friends with, that I am writing with, that I catch up on dinners and meals with if I'm in their city. 
So this was the place where I found my academic tribe. And I think it's for that reason that I cherish it so much. Um, it was my introduction to academia. Yeah, and you know, I think my experience is somewhat similar. It, it is a tribe, but there are no brutal initiation ceremonies. Um, it's fairly free and uh, open. And the contrast with SMS, uh, with the academy is very uh, important. The academy is a vast conference with 10,000 people. The SMS does feel more like a tribe or a village, um, especially because there's so many social events together, so many opportunities to eat together. Um, I, some of my favorite SMS conferences have been ones where participation was quite limited. I remember attending one in um, San Francisco just after 9-11 when nobody wanted to fly. And that was great. There was a nice cozy community there. There's another one in Florida just after a hurricane or during a hurricane. That was dramatic. But again, it brought everyone together. And I think that kind of spirit is, is strong in SMS. Um, and uh, it's something to take advantage with. And as Annie says, you will find friends and colleagues uh, who will be working with you for many years and you'll be enjoying being with for many years after this SMS conference. Richard, I do hope London is not limited since we're coming out of one of those. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we won't be talking about London and the, the crisis in London, I'm sure, in 20 years time. <laughs> Um, so I'd love to ask what inspired the conference theme um, and why you think the theme is relevant for attendees in 2022. Um, would one of you like to take that first? Oh, well, I'll go first on this one and then I you can add. Okay. Um, we started with, um, well, I started with the notion of open in mind, partly because I do open strategy, um, which is a more participative, inclusive, transparent way of doing strategy work, but also because openness is an important value. And one of the things we may pick up on this is um, we hoped to be more open to diverse traditions and perspectives um, in this conference than previously. So openness is an important underlying value for the conference, for academic life, and something which is worthwhile defending, as well as close, especially in these times, as well as close to my research interests and open strategy. Anu, I know you added something. Um, so I think openness, when Richard initiated that, that resonated with me a lot because I work on innovation and uh, uh, corporate entrepreneurship um, and open boundaries and working mm -hmm. and finding innovative ways um, to work together um, and to adapt and to innovate in a better way is, is something that I work on. So that resonated with me immediately. And, and I think to go back, Amber, to your question about, well, why is it relevant in 2022? I think this whole idea of open innovation, open strategy is really, really relevant if you try to look at what's going on around us, the current trends whether you, uh, and this is reflected in the special, the four themes that we have around um, our plenary sessions as well, and, and our special theme, theme tracks, whether it's societal challenges, whether it's new technologies, uh, digital or otherwise, uh, whether it's the changing workforce um, or external shocks like the pandemic, um, all of these trends require organizations to be not closed, but much more open to working together and to, um, to thrive in this much more complex and uncertain environment, uh, so full of disruptions. So I think that's that was sort of the starting point. And then Richard and I kind of brought together our own interests into shaping the, the, the theme tracks, uh, but also the plenary sessions. Awesome. Well, I think that's a, a really great transition to the next question we wanted to ask you, which is what, um, what sessions, programs, and activities at the conference uh, are you the most excited about? What are some can't miss um, activities and, and things that, uh, that everyone here will want to check out? I need to go on. So, so I think there is something to be said about all those theme tracks, I think they're all special to us because we sort of um, talk to the people that we wanted, you know, we want these sort of things to be included and given special prominence in the conference. And I think um, 
So if you look at emerging technologies, um, if you look at open strategy, this, the, the, the plenary sessions, the theme tracks, I think are all very exciting for me. But personally, the most exciting thing that I am looking forward to is the Monday night in the Natural History Museum. So for those of you who know London, this is, it's right next to Imperial. I take my kids there. We stand in lines um, during holiday times to get in. So I know it well. So I'm really, really looking forward to it, um, to seeing it in the evening and in such a special setting. So that's, that's my all time favorite. Yeah, and it's a great place, eccentric place as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's a spectacular um, location and everyone will have fun there. And it's, these kinds of events are important for networking. Um, and I'd really strongly encourage everybody to use this opportunity to network, to build collegial relationships, um, at least to, to know some of the faces behind the papers that you particularly admire as well. But uh, so the social events of all sorts, lunches and so on and so forth are important for networking. Another uh, event that I would mention particularly is the one which relates to openness and diversity is the Monday afternoon theme uh, the plenary where Dame Vivian Hunt um, mm -hmm. is talking about her career. She has over the years um, advocated for diversity in her workplace. She's worked for McKinsey and Co. She ended up as London senior partner in McKinsey. Um, she's also personifies something uh, diversity herself in some ways, and she's the first person to be honored with the SMS Lifetime Achievement Award, who is a woman and non-white. So that that's important, I think, um, that we should uh, recognize her achievements and be more inclusive in who we recognize. And so she will be talking with uh, Rita McGrath, Anita McGrath, rather, Anita McGrath, and Zahir um, Shaka Zahir um, on various issues to do with diversity and how we can think differently about strategy. So I think that's going to be a great session. And that will be chaired by Jamie Cattell, um, who's our co chair as well of the, the conference as a whole from IBM. So lots of interesting perspectives there, should be a great session. Thank you for those highlights. Um, so last question for the panelists. Um, do you have any special tips or recommendations for first time attendees who are trying to get the most out of their experience? Um, and you know, feel free to take this personal if the, these are things that you learned over the years or maybe wish you'd done differently in your early mm -hmm. conference experiences? So um, I, I can go first, but I think this will be a common theme across whoever chooses to answer this question. You know, SMS is the one thing that we don't like about SMS is so expensive, the registration fees, oh my God. But then once you realize is that it um, encompasses all of the meals, your breakfast, your dinner, and your lunch is taken care of by the conference. And so, and, and that has, the advantage is that everyone is there for the breakfast, the lunch and the dinners. There's nobody's going out. Well, some people may be, but, but the point is you have captive audience there. And that's amazing for finding um, all of the, you know, as Richard said, go find the people that you, whose papers you admire, you will find them at one of these events. Um, so SMS is really putting on all these receptions. There's the Monday night event. Uh, and everyone's going to be there. So you will really find um, a pretty intimate community that actually shows up um, and doesn't have to go outside to find their meals. And so find that time, connect with people. That's really, really important. And, and you'll find that the people are quite friendly and it's not a feeling where you feel lost because there is no getting together place like maybe, you know, I can only contrast this to the academy, which is a big place. So there's no really getting together place, not that many of them. SMS, you'll find it's all in this hotel. Everyone's going to be there. So do network. Make friends. Yeah, I absolutely agree. There's something very pleasant and informal about sitting down, sharing bread, as it were, with um, your yeah. future colleagues. Everybody is there to meet other people. So you don't need to be shy. Um, that's more senior, more junior, all there to meet other people and exchange ideas. 
Um, some people will be busier than others. It, it may be that's true, but um, uh, I think you should not be shy. Uh, on Saturday, there are going to be some uh, various interest group and um, workshops. Those are a great opportunity to begin conversations. And if you follow through the same track through the two or three days, three or four days, I suppose, um, you will get to see the same faces and you'll share the same great experiences, great papers and one or two dud papers. And you can sort of share enthusiasms and share ridicule even perhaps. No, not ridicule, but share a, a, a laughing moment about the various things which happen over the course of that track. You'll get to know people that way. Um, you'll become familiar faces to each other and you'll hear people asking questions about particular themes which may resonate with your own research as well. And grab the authors after their sessions. Um, if you are giving a presentation, regard it as an advertising slot. You cannot properly communicate your research ideas in the few minutes of a presentation. What you need to do is grab people's interest and assure them that you have interesting conclusions. Then people will speak to you afterwards and vice versa. If you're in the audience, you see something interesting, chat to people as they after the presentation um, they'll be flattered by your interest so don't be shy again another tip that i have is so if you go to the sms program and identify you know there's many tracks uh, so behavioral strategy cooperative strategy etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's many of them identify two or three and then go look at their sunday morning program the so sunday morning program is dedicated to all the tracks doing their own thing at the same time and there's going to be two or three different, I don't want to call them workshops, but they will invite senior uh, scholars from the field to share um, their perspectives with us. They will invite, they will interview them. They'll invite practitioners on very cutting edge um, ideas and ask them what's going on. Uh, so I think that's also another place where you find if you're interested in one or two areas, those sessions are really, really informative. And then if you go that same evening to the business meetings, there's they're always followed by, by a reception. And that's a really nice way to understand what that track that interests you, what it's all about, and then actually meet the officers and then uh, meet everyone else who's interested in that topic as well. So that's another, the, so Sunday, look at the Sunday program a little bit carefully at, at, um, in the areas if you're, that you're interested in. All right. Thank you so much um, to our panelists for answering our questions and sharing a little about the context of the conference. Um, we'd love to now do a couple of uh, breakout rooms so that people get a chance to uh, meet each other and meet a few more um, very involved volunteers that we have on the call and wonderful SMS members, um, our breakout room facilitators um, who will be joining our co-chairs as facilitators. And we'd love to have you introduce yourselves real quick um, Aaron, Giada, and Craig. Um, so Aaron, would you mind going first, please? Yeah, I'm Aaron Hill. I'm uh, at the uh, University of Florida. I am currently the, tr uh, the uh, chair of the Strategic Leadership and uh, Governance Interest Group. And I think this will be my 11th SMS, maybe. My first one was DC. So it uh, doesn't seem like that many, but I guess that would be 12. Wow, I'm old. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. I look forward to meeting a few of you in the breakout rooms. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Um, Giada or Craig, you want to be mind introducing yourselves? Just to make it confusing and make you talk over each other. Craig, <laughs> will you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you, Amber. Uh, thanks for being part of the session. It's really nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Craig Crossland. I'm at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, you can see some of it behind me. Uh, this this isn't my actual view, as I like to pretend, but uh, I, I wish it were. Uh, so I've been a member, I think, uh, since 2006 of SMS. My first uh, conference was uh, Vienna 2006, which was really nice. Um, I, I don't look nearly as old as Aaron, but I've been around about the same amount of time. Uh, so I think this is about my 12th. I didn't go to everyone initially, but uh, I usually go every year. Uh, I currently am on the board, I'm the treasurer. Uh, so if you want to complain about what we are charging, come to me. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm ready to, to listen. And I've done a little bit with some of the IGs and uh, some other things on the, the SMJ side. Uh, yeah, looking forward to, to seeing you all. 
you, Craig. Okay. Thank you, Ada. Can and you there's me. So hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all, even if uh, just virtually, at least for now. So my name is Giada Di Stefano. I'm an associate professor at Bocconi University in Milan. I currently, so let's start from the first uh, uh, SMS. I had to check. I remember it was in Cologne and it was actually 2008. So, and what I remember from that conference, uh, speaking to what Anu was saying about the, this idea of being, uh, of being home to some extent at SMS, I remember this elevator ride, which I think I will remember for the rest of my life. So I was a PhD student uh, and I was riding an elevator with uh, Jay Barney, Margie Petteraff, uh, and a bunch of other people that you can clearly associate to the resource-based view. And I remember texting to one of my friends at the PhD program, I am riding an elevator with the uh, RBV, because to me it was like, I was looking at all these badges and actually the people were there and they were physically there and you could see them all. So. I remember this at this sort of moment in which is like, I like this conference because you actually get to see people and they are here. And when you read the name tags, you actually know these names, which is very different, I think, of a field compared to AOM, which is wonderful, but it's much more heterogeneous. So you have a different, it has a different feel to it. Let's put it this way. So for SMS right now, I'm the chair of the competitive strategy IG. Uh, I've been a rep at large for behavioral strategy with Craig, actually, we overlapped there for a while. Um, I'm also serving as the associate program uh, director, I think that's the title for the SRF dissertation grant program. Uh, for those of you who are PhD students or have PhD students who, um, who, have, who are doing interesting work, this is the time to submit, so don't forget about that, because there are funds uh, that, uh, uh, that we're going to, to offer to students who are doing particularly interesting work. And then I'm involved with SMJ as an associate editor, so multiple points of contact, uh, and uh, as I said, uh, this feels home to me, so I'm glad to welcome you home today. Thank you, Gianna. Wonderful.